Krusty's got some Cowboys fill in the blank for you guys today. I'm going to make a statement here, and you're going to. I'll stop when you need to fill in the blank with your answers. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. gentlemen. In his opening remarks for the start of training camp, Jerry Jones' theme is going to be blank. In his opening remarks for the start of training camp, Jerry Jones' theme is going to be blank. Marketing related. It'll be about how we got to California because we are so badass and so good at this that we made this safe. I, Jerry Jones defeated the coronavirus and made training camp in California happen. Mm. Why did I do that? For you, Cowboy fans. Can I, can Hit I, up the trailer on your way out. Get you two t-shirts. Third one's a quarter off. Let's go. Jerry, can I get some remarks? Just a couple of remarks just to uh, maybe talk about. It. Uh, well, uh, Brian, welcome everybody to Oxnard. Good to have you. I won't actually be in Oxnard. It's a little trashy for me. I'll be up in Ventura <laughs> and uh, down in LA, and I'll be out around here, though. <laughs> Uh, we got here, and we're glad to be here because we've sold all the T-shirts that, that we're going to, gear uh, and whatnots, that we're going to in DFW, and we like to uh, sell merch out this way, too. Uh, look forward to uh, a lot of gang activity in Oxnard, and once again, I'll be in Ventura. I won't see any of it, but uh, you guys be safe out here and uh, run up a good credit card tab. That's the American <laughs> dream. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate <laughs> that. Kick I always love ass. I, was I, good. I, I love that. General. Well, I wish we were still in the days where Jerry would stand up there and brashly, you know, brag about whooping ass or getting glory hole, something like that, you know. And uh, I, I think I think he's moved past that a little bit. I, I think maybe Jason Garrett ground that out of him with, you know, pay attention to process. So hopefully in year two of McCarthy, we can start to get old Jerry back, you know, the bold one. But I don't think so. I think he'll talk about it's, it's key to stay healthy to accomplish our goals. Like it. I think he'll play it safe. I like it. I like where you guys are going with that one. All right, here we go, guys. I'm going to feel blank if the defense is shutting down the offense in practice. I'm going to feel blank if the defense is shutting down the offense in practice. I'm going to feel like uh, uh, discouraged, I think would be the, the operative word. Um, there's no way this defense should be getting the best of the offense. So I will be pretty pessimistic. You know, I, I don't think there's any way this defense is going to be so good that it beating the offense will be a sign of something we should be excited about there. Sorry, I could have said that in four seconds. Here's Jeff. That's all right. I'm going to go <laughs> no, with... Uh, like it, you, you took a page out of my book. <laughs> I'm going to go with amorous because I don't know if you can say horny on the radio. Uh, so I'm going to go with amorous. Amorous. how I would feel mm -hmm. because I am in the camp that says the NFL is not going to be able to stop the Cowboys offense. They right. will be one of the five best offenses in football. So I'm just going to go completely the other direction where if the defense is like making the offense struggle, I'll be like, well, hot damn, maybe they're not going to be the worst thing ever. Because in practice, there's nothing the offense that can do that's going to make me think you're not going to have a good offense. The Cowboys are going to have a really good offense. So if the defense actually puts up a fight and plays well at times, I'll be amorous. So you'll be, you guys would be okay though if like one day we're out there watching the offense is taking it to them. Next day, defense is coming back. I, I mean, think you can't. My rule is you can't really worry about it. Okay. Because otherwise, it's like you're going to, which way do you want to focus on it? Like, hey, the offense had a great day. I know. Or, that's the best. Oh, man, yeah. this defense is awful. And yeah. Like, it's impossible to figure yeah. out what to take out of each one. Mm -hmm. So I will just observe and report the facts. You will report the facts. No question. Gentlemen. Yes, sir. Blank is going to be a training camp star, but trust me, that's all he's going to be. Oh, <laughs> Uh, oh, come on. Who's going to be the random name? There's always like a receiver we start talking about. Yeah, that's Lance what I was Lenore, of. Yeah. somebody like that. Uh, Lucky Whitehead. <laughs> could be Cedric Wilson. Could be Simi. Could... It's going to be somebody who doesn't matter because you have three wide receivers that are going to play all the snaps. Sure. But there will be a guy that we're talking about that we're like, oh, I tell you what. Having had, a great practice. Had another good one. Yeah. And then you get to the end of camp, and you're like, well, I tell you what, they're going to have to keep him. And it's like, well, and he's on waivers. And he made the practice squad. Yeah. Like, okay. God, I don't have a great name. Um, but, but you know there's going to be somebody, right? Yeah. You know that we're going to be out there raving about somebody, and it's just not going to be. 
How about, I'll just throw out a random DB. How about Reggie Robinson? Yeah. Reggie Robinson. He'll have like a really good day in one-on-one, stuff like that, knock down a few balls, things yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, linebacker. Is it Francis Bernard? Yeah. yeah. He, he got a little bit of hype last year. Yeah. But there's so many linebackers that uh, even if even if it's, you know, for really good fundamental reasons, I don't think you could find room for him during the regular season. Okay. When it comes, like for you guys, when it comes to Leighton Van Der Esch or Amari Cooper's health, I worry about blank the most. Oh, Leighton Van Der Esch. Yeah, you know, I think I think Amari Cooper is going to struggle with minor injuries throughout his career. I think the I think the foot surgery from back in January is a cause for concern, but to me, it all adds up to plantar, plantar fasciitis. Yeah. And even if that's bad, I think he's he's shown over the last two seasons he can still tough it out and perform like one of the top ten wide receivers. Layton's is career threatening. Jeffrey. Well, if I wanted to go debate show on you, I would go uh, Amari Cooper. Right. And I would say, because I know Van Der Esch is getting hurt. Who cares? <laughs> I'm ready to play without him. Okay. If Amari Cooper gets hurt, that's bad, and it's going to hurt my football team. But I agree with Gavin. Uh, if you're talking about who are you more concerned about, Leighton Van Der Esch, because it's every year. Like The difference for what e happens to each of them every year, Amari Cooper gets banged up and plays through things. And we wonder after an iffy game like oh no is it going to be a bad year oh what's wrong with him Leighton Van Der Esch is going to miss 8 to 12 weeks of football so I, I'm not all that worried about the guy that I'm used to him being banged up and playing through it yeah. I'm worried about the guy who it turns out that his spine is too narrow mm -hmm. and he's going to miss another season I think you're absolutely right guys with that I think you have to Cooper has found a way to manage it whether he doesn't practice or not but he'll go out there and play Van Der Esch there's going to be something that you're, he's going to have to deal with that it's not going to allow him to practice at all. Okay, how about this one? Mark my words, blank is going to be the star of hard knocks. Oh, Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons. I knew it when we interviewed him right after they picked him, and we were talking about his play style, and he was like, oh, you know, see ball, hit ball, like the water boy. Mm -hmm. And so, like, he has the personality. They're going to find the chess angle where he likes to play chess. He's Cerebral. Funny. He's yeah. a first-round pick. Yeah. He's a freak show on the field. Micah Parsons will be the star hard knocks. General, you have anybody? It could be a coach, too, maybe. I was thinking maybe a coach. I think Bones Fossil is going to be a guy that's going to be front and center for this. Special teams coaches always find a way to be like, you know, oh, look at me. I'm out here. Look at me yelling yeah. and screaming and jumping around. And, you know, and I, 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 would, I would bet – Bones Fossil is going to be that star. I could see that. I could see Dan Quinn. Of course, our guy Joe Looney. Big bad Joe Looney is no longer with us, at right. least for now. Uh, so I can't pick Joe, who I would love to. I, I'll go. You know what? Let me play a, let me play a card here. I'm going to say Zeke. I, I think okay. this offseason was about him growing up on the field. And I think if him and his agent are talking, this is an opportunity to increase our marketability. You're a superstar without endorsements. Right, you uh, so flash the smile, flash that personality that everybody knows you have behind the scenes, and these cameras are going to pick up on it, and you can totally reinvent yourself.